continue. All right, so this update mainly pertains to the playlist section, which is this whole bottom section down here. Um, I have not found anything up top that has changed or anything in the settings that has really changed um, besides um, the Apple Music and Spotify integration, which is also covered in uh, some of the three-point uh, whatever uh, updates. So in, the, in your main uh, crate area over here, the first thing that you're going to notice is that you now have the ability to color your crates to make your crates various colors by right-clicking and you can also select emojis but let's just do the color for right now and we can change the color to whatever color we want let's go ahead and make this one a nice green so now we see that that's green um, I can see how, how one might color code their crates for maybe early evening or opening sets and maybe late night sets or maybe Latin sets, or maybe old school sets. Uh, again, it's a, it all depends on you and your workflow and how you do things. The main thing is going to be that you have the ability, as you saw just now, to right click. You also have the ability to create emojis. So if you see right here on my mashup folder, I've got the little headphone emoji. And you can pick random ones. And they've got a couple different hundred that you can choose from and if you don't know what the emoji is or what it's called you can search for it right there to bring it up what's next let's see you have the ability to move a entire crate to the prepare panel or move an entire crate to the stems crate over here for separation you can also analyze an entire crate all at once if you wanted to relocate this crate, maybe you want to take it from my documents to my downloads, you can do that. Uh, you can also rescan the entire crate without having to go through the whole rigmarole of uh, coming over here to the files and doing all that stuff like you used to have to before. Um, yeah, it's still there. Um, but now you can right click and do the same thing to, to rescan your uh, info. So the reason why you might want to do that, so say for instance, this two chains right here, if it did not have the artist, the artist info is always contained in the file name. So even if it's not right here, it's going to be in the original file name itself. And what, what it does is go through and find that missing information and fill it in. It will not put the BPM or the key. That is done via... Uh, analyze so right now we see I have these two folders designated as my favorites that's why they have stars by them I can remove that from favorites and you see it just moved down now it's back down here and I can right click and again remove the other from favorites and again why might that be important maybe you're doing a wedding and you've created a crate especially for the wedding and you want that information up top and you want it to be readily available without having to do all this right here. Um, so making it your favorite is going to move it all the way to the top. And it'll be right there for easy access. Again, right back to the right click. Rename the crate. Of course, we could rename the crate before by double clicking. But now you can do it right here. You can delete the crate. Which <laughs> uh, people have done on accident plenty of times. And that's not a good thing. So they, they might want to put an undo button in there as well. But if you ever do delete a crate, just go to your recycle bin and put uh, right click in the recycle bin. And you can choose uh, put back to where it was. And it'll put it back for you once you reopen Serato. Now, again, addressing the crate section. You still have the ability to create new crates right here. The smart crate section it's got a new look to it, but it's still the same thing. If you know how to, how to work to smart crates, uh, nothing on that has changed. I might make a video on smart crates. A lot of people don't use smart crates. I don't, but I can see how it might be useful for, for some DJs. So I might make a video just on that by itself. A new feature also added is the search bar. If I want to search my crates to find 
which crate might have the title country in it. It would help if I spelled it correctly. These are all the crates that I have that uh, have the title country in it. Um, or maybe old school or house or whatever else. So it, it'll help you sort through your crates. A lot of people have multiple crates. Um, I myself do not. I kind of keep mine genre specific and I kind of try to keep it to a minimum to cut down the confusion. But I do know people who, who have, uh, for instance, crates uh, titled by maybe dates. You know, the date that they downloaded that folder or the, downloaded those songs. So you might even uh, come up here and search via date and bring up uh, the crate that you desire. All right, so let's move over to the library section. That's this section right here. Um, we see that none of this right here has changed. It's just got a different look to it. So you still can sort by color. Uh, you still can sort by the... Um, so if this was beat source, you would have a B. There you go. There's the B. Or if there was something wrong with the file, you'd have that lightning bolt signature right here. So none of that has changed. It just looks a little different. But over here in the uh, file section, you also have the ability to right click. And you could add this song to the prepare folder by doing that. You also could do it via keyboard shortcut. You could add this song to your, to your stems crate. You could analyze this particular song. You could change the BPM of the song. So if the song, for instance, Cupid Shuffle, often reads as 70 BPM when it's actually 140, you can uh, double that and make it the true uh, BPM right here by just clicking double. Uh, there's also a keyboard shortcut for that. Uh, you can also rate your crates, uh, excuse me, rate your files by emoji. And I can see how you might want to do that. So maybe if you put uh, check marks or, or something like that to, to show which, for instance, if you, if you searched Usher, yeah, in my files, you'd pull up like 30 different results because I have different remixes of it. But if there are four or five different remixes that you play constantly, those are ones that you might want to put an emoji by uh, indicating that these are the ones that you want. So it kind of cuts down. Again, when you're, when you're in the workflow, you want to work quick and efficiently without having to uh, take too much time. And you can do the same thing also by initiating uh, different colors to your track. So again, if this is the early evening song, early uh, if you're opening set type stuff, you can make it a light color. For the late night, you can make it a darker color. Again, whatever, co whatever color coding system that you want to come up with, um, you can do that. And that's the whole reason behind all this right here. It's just to help you in, in your crate organization. Uh, show in crate. So, so if I clicked on this right here, it would show which crate this song was in, which it's in my latest import. And show that result right there. What else do we have here? Enable beat grid lock. So if, uh, you know, you can edit your beat grid. Serato's beat, beat grids are not that good. But in order, but you can uh, lock your beat grid so that it can't be edited. Just like you can protect your files so if they can't be edited. Now you can do the same thing to your beat grid. Rescan file ID. Again, we talked about that um, earlier about filling in uh, missing missing data. Uh, relocate. We can move this track to a different location. So if this track was located, for instance, in my documents, I can move it to my downloads, etc. So you can you can move f uh, files like that now without having to come up here to your file section and do it uh, via like a finder style up here. So you can do it actually in the library itself. Show and Finder, that's going to show you where the song is located, but you should have that information anyway over here if you have it uh, clicked to, to, to show it. Uh, but if not, then you can do it right here. Click on that. It'll show you where it's located in your computer. And this part right here, I do like. I do like. Uh, you can delete it from the crate. You can delete it from your library or delete it from your computer altogether. This would help out a lot. See, up here you see like this informer up here. These are two of the same songs, uh, the same remix service, 
and I bet you they are in different folders. Yes, they are. So I would be able to eliminate one of those and still have the same file. It's just taking up space. But you can see how that would uh, help me uh, clean up my files and create more hard drive uh, space by doing so. So that's the right-click information in your library section. Now, there have been some changes up top here. In your search, you can search. Right now, I'm logged into BeatSource. You can search uh, BeatSource only, or you can search all, which means that you would search BeatSource and your uh, your C drive, your hard drive. Um, it would do that before, but now you can just <laughs> you can click on it and make it happen. Uh, again, that's kind of redundant because before, even if I search down, so if I, if I research prints, it's going to bring up all my prints files, which are right here. And if you watch right here in the icon section, eventually it'll start showing beat source results as well. So, and without the beat source being checked. So, again, it's kind of redundant because, yeah, it, even if you search beat source, Without all selected, it's still going to bring up your local your local files before it shows your streaming files that are available. So it, again, it's kind of redundant. The history section, nothing much has changed there. Your prepare section, uh, nothing much has changed there. Your files, again, for you to navigate and move files around, uh, nothing's changed there. You do have the option on your prepare uh, panel to do this right here. And I, I think this is kind of crazy. And I'm, I've seen DJs that really are against it and really don't like it. Um, I prefer this as far as your prepare. That's just what I'm used to. It's the same reason why I still use the vertical because um, I get more information. And, and when Serato came out, Scratch Live, this is how it looked, uh, basically anyways. You had the vertical waves and that's you didn't you couldn't change it if you wanted to. But yes, of course, now you can change it to any, any one of these right here. But I still prefer the vertical waves, and I still prefer my pre prepare folder to be right here. Uh, with, it, with it being on the side, it kind of cuts down the real estate on the information that you have right here. So that's really not a good idea, even though you could do that. But still, I, I use my comment section. I use my keys every now and then. So yeah, it's not a good idea to have my prepare folder over to the side. So that's one change that they've made that they probably won't go through with. Once they get enough feedback, they'll probably uh, revert back to the way it used to be. Analyze files. Um, analyze on import. So when you bring files in, they'll automatically be analyzed. Any file brought into your library. Analyze for key. Analyze for BPM and for, and for beat grid. And I have my BPM uh, range selected as such. And you can analyze your entire library at the push of a button. So again, nothing nothing has changed there either. The album art. I don't know anybody that uses this. It's kind of cool if you have your own edits. I guess you can put your logo or whatever in it in the MP3. So that'd be cool to, to look at all night, I guess. And when you load the song, you, you'd be able to uh, uh, look at your own little logo right here. But... Nobody really cares about that. You're working. If you're a working DJ, you're working. You don't need all that. Um, so that covers everything that's been covered in the new Serato 4.0 update. Um, this might be a new section right here, the, the Serato Play setting. So this is Serato Play. So right now I do not have a controller hooked up. So you see this right here, which has got the crossfader on the actual... Uh, laptop itself and I've got the trims here and the filter as well so you basically can do everything that you could do with the controller and if you know your keyboard shortcuts yeah you'd be able to DJ without a a controller or uh, or DVS hooked up to it and this would actually control the headphones how they're split out and again the hotkeys and it shows the crossfader assigns where whether it's assigned to Deck three or deck one, or if it's assigned to deck two or deck four. Again, pretty much uh, elementary type stuff. So your boy DJ Excel, DFW DJ School. This has been the Serato 4.0 update.
uh, letting you know what's going on with some of the features. Let me know in the comments what you think about some of the stuff that's been added or maybe some of the stuff that should be added. Um, Serato's kind of slow about rolling out features. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on this video about that, but that's just another software seems to come out frequently with updates. Serato, either the development team has kind of uh, maybe been cherry picked or maybe they don't have a development team that's up to, up to snuff. Maybe uh, some of the other softwares, no names, um, maybe they've got br brighter minds over there. So who knows? I'm loyal to Serato. I've been a Scratch Live and a Serato user for years. Uh, so it's kind of hard for me to break off, but we'll see maybe in a future video what happens with that. This <laughs> uh, is your boy DJ XL with uh, DFW DJ School. As always, practice, practice, and practice some more. Peace.